making a murderer. Netflix. And chill. Welcome to Netflix and Chill, where we watch Netflix programs and let you know what we think of them, so you can make up your mind whether you want to watch them or not yourself. And today we are going... Again, I am here alone because, yeah, uh, Sarah and Leslie started watching this without me, I mind you, and they didn't get past a couple, one or two episodes, they just didn't like it. Um, but I didn't get to see it, so I started watching it, and that is, well, and like anything, I tend to watch it to completion. So we are talking about the first, what they call part, even though I guess you'd call it a season, I don't know, it depends. This is a Netflix thing, so Netflix Chilling Adventures of Sabrina Part 1. Yes, so um, this is not your uh, Sabrina that was on television before. This is not your Sabrina the comics now, and I will admit that I have not read the, the Sabrina comics. I do have some of the new Sabrina comics, which is more, I think, in line with this particular version of Sabrina. I don't know if they are the same or not, but darker. Um, and I did not watch the uh, television show Sabrina, um, though we do actually own it, the complete series. Leslie got it so that her and Sarah could watch it. Um, I do know of it, and I do know that it was more of a kind of a light-hearted teen comedy type thing, um, sort of like a, an I Dream of Jeannie for, you know, a new um, uh, audience. And then I do, was I believe there might have been a Sabrina um, way back when, like I Dream of Jeannie level Sabrina. Um, was there? Maybe not. Maybe it's just the 90s one that I'm thinking of. Um, I don't know. Um, but yeah, essentially the first, it, uh, the first se season of this show, The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, um, deals with Sabrina, who is a half-witch, um, who hasn't yet, um, I guess on their 16th birthday, a witch is supposed to sign the book of the devil and give their soul to the devil, and thus the devil instows upon them, you know, great power. Um, and so the witches are able to do, cast more powerful spells and call upon demons and such, blah, blah, blah. Um, because it isn't that, that they get to perform magic, because Sabrina can technically do magic before that point she just isn't as powerful I guess um so the whole first season is kind of wrapped around half of it is about her um choice between whether um you know when a witch becomes a witch they kind of give up the mortal life but she's up until this point being attending a regular school so she has regular friends who aren't witches. Um, and she would be giving that up. And of course, people just don't want to give up their friends and such. Um, so it's all about her kind of dealing with that. Um, and this whole uh, giving away of the soul. Um, and then the second half of the um, series, the season, whatever you want to say... Um, it sort of deals with she's now attending two schools one is witch school and one is the non-witch school I'm giving away a little bit of spoiler there but I'm not really saying why um, and so there's these two worlds that she's dealing with right so that's, that's kind of what the second half of the season deals with um, now this is not anything like Sabrina of old. Uh, I'll just say this is a darker Sabrina. Um, <clears throat> and I'm not even saying darker in the terms of Buffy level darker. This is more darker... <sighs> it's sort of in between a Buffy the Vampire Slayer level and...
it's maybe uh, I haven't seen enough of the Vampire Diaries to say it's along that level, but it's definitely not. Um, shoot, what was that Sookie Vampire show? Crap. <laughs> but you know the one I'm talking about, right? With the vampires and Sookie's sack house, um, which was like very adult and very drama and very, you know, along those lines. This is 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 reaching towards that, but then it still has some, you know, moments of of people in, you know, masks and that sort of Buffy the Vampire Slayer type comedy going on. Um, so it's a little bit of a mix and match. There's a lot of teenage drama and things about sexuality and uh, dealing with you know friends and family and Satan and demons and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, going on in this uh, the show um, but uh, yeah Sabrina is is played by uh, none other than Kiernan uh, Shipka now Kiernan is um, mostly known for Mad Men I think um, where she played Sally Draper and I didn't know this, but she did the voice of Jinora on The Legend of Korra. Um, so, wow, that's that's cool. And then, of course, she's moved on to the, the Chilling Adventures um, stuff. She was also in a film um, that genre fans might know called Carriers. Um, and in 2014, she did a voice for the anime, uh, the English voice for the anime. Um, when Marnie was there, she did the voice for Marnie. Um, so you might know her from that. Um, but uh, yeah, she is the Sabrina character, right? So it's not your necessarily your bubbly Sabrina you know, bubbly blonde Sabrina that you may know from the 90s. It's more of the uh, down-to-earth teenager who has to deal. She, she's a very strong uh, feminist um, type Sabrina. Um, and in this, she has a family that she lives with. In, of course, they live and they are witches and a warlock because um, uh, Sabrina's parents have died. Uh, she lives with her two aunts and a cousin, and they all though the the aunts and the cousin work the the town mortuary. <laughs> so uh, first, the I guess the eldest of the aunts is uh, Zelda Spellman, played by Miranda Otto. Miranda Otto, um, which is is pretty cool um, that's um, she's one of those uh, actors who's been around for a while been in quite a lot of stuff um, uh, yeah I mean genre fans may know her from anything from Thin Red Line to War of the Worlds with Tom Cruise to um, probably best known for me from the Lord of the Rings movie where she played Eowyn yes it was kind of a smaller role but you know, it is what it is. Um, for you horror aficionados, she was Esther Mullins in Annabelle Creation. Um, she was in uh, Lock and Key, I Frankenstein, um, Initiation, um, all sorts of stuff. I mean, she's she's been in quite a few things. Um, the uh, other aunt is played by. Uh, Lucy Davis, Lucy Davis, um, and that's Hilda Spellman. Yes, their last name is Spellman, right? Um, so Lucy uh, plays the the other aunt. She's kind of like the um, the cook, you know, the bubbly. Oh, I'm more. She's more. Yeah, she's the bubbly aunt, the bubbly witch, if you will. Um, and you may know her from anything from. Uh, if you watch the BBC Office, she played Don Tinsley. Um, she was Diane in Shaun of the Dead. She played Edda in the Wonder Woman movie, the new Wonder Woman movie. Um, I'm trying to think of things that she, she's been in quite a few 
things, but um, most of the stuff is kind of not really popular over here. Um, Garfield too. She played Abby. If that means anything. Um, but um, if you're a big time horror fan, and I've talked about this film before, some guy who kills people, she was the Stephanie character in that film, um, and yeah, uh, it's awesome, see, she, she plays the part very, very well. Um, then we get the, the cousin, the, I, it's nice that he's not a token person of color in this, because there are quite a few people of color. Um, but it is predominantly white. I will not, I will not, you know, I mean, Sabrina's white, ants are white. Most of the people of the schools are white, but there are multiple people of color, at least. So it's not just one. And one of them happens to be the cousin, played by Chance per -der Perdomo, um, who I didn't really know him. Uh, he's a newcomer in, in, as far as I know, um, I looked him up and he hadn't been in much of anything. That being said, he is he is quite talented, so I think he's somebody to look, uh, have, you know, keep your eyes open on f in the future. Now, like I said, Sabrina is attending high school, so she's got high school friends, um, including Jazz Sinclair, who phew, she's got great. Not quite, not like afro hair, but like big, big, big curly hair. Um, and they play it up and like really, really well in this. She just looks the part so like, yeah, just looks so good uh, with the, her hair um, in the sense that she's, she's almost got this black power um, kind of... Black Power 70s um, feminist movement look to her, and I think that's why her hair really works with it. Kind of has that 70s vibe to it, so um, yeah, uh, again um, hadn't I didn't really know her. Apparently she's had a few minor roles, like the, the Vampire Diaries and uh, Rizzolian Isles. Um, but uh, yeah, it's good to see that they have uh, definitely some newcomers in this. Uh, again, there is also uh, the another friend played by Latchlin Watson. Um, she plays. Um, she comes across as a very uh, boy-looking girl, which I don't know that they, I don't know that they have actually said that she's lesbian or not, but I wouldn't be surprised if her character is supposed to be along those lines. Um, and she's kind of the meek person in the group. Very small in comparison. Um, again, I don't know her from anything, um, but, you know, what's, that doesn't mean anything. Um, she doesn't have as predominant a role as I think really um, she should have I mean she does have some episodes where she does you know she is more of a feature but again she isn't the main thing like she, she does take kind of a back burner sometimes she's almost used as the reason for rather than being a big part of it um, but I mean this this thing this whole show has a huge, huge cast of people who are, um, you know, uh, majorly important and play big roles, including uh, Sabrina's boyfriend. <laughs> the boyfriend. You know there had to be a boyfriend, right? And this is kind of one of the reasons why she can't... She's having that problem becoming the witch. She wants to also live with the mortals, including her boyfriend. Um, and, yeah, her boyfriend is Harvey. Harvey Kinkle, weird name, eh? Harvey Kinkle, um, who's played by Ross Lynch. Now, Ross um, doesn't have a huge 
career behind him. Um, apparently, Austin and Ali, the TV series, when he was younger, is where he made his, his big uh, thing. But I know him from my friend Dahmer. And apparently a lot of the young people are really into this guy. He's kind of like, you know, a teen heartthrob, right? Um, so he's a great pick to throw into this, right? You get, you increase your ratings. Like, uh, I know at the Toronto After Dark, my friend Dahmer, huge crowds, huge crowds, right? So, um, yeah, he played Jeff Dahmer. He played the Dahmer character in that, in that film. So, yeah, having him in this is um, definitely a bonus. Again, he... Even surprisingly enough, despite the fact that he's supposed to be the boyfriend, he again doesn't play as strong of a role as I would have thought. But such is life, I suppose. Um, when we get over to the evil side, we get the the chief warlock, the headmaster of the witch school, um, the guy, the evil man in charge. Or he's supposed to be evil, but maybe he's just you know. Maybe he's just a witch doing witch thing, or a warlock doing warlock things, right? Uh, as Father Faustus Blackwood, um, played by Richard Coyle. Now, Richard Coyle has been in, in a variety of things. Um, Prince of Persia, you know that movie that came out based off of the, the video game. Um, Grabbers, if you ever saw that film, uh, also played at the Toronto After Dark Film Festival, by the way. Um... Outpost Black Sun, um, Topsy Turvy. I don't know, maybe that's not your cup of tea, but he's been in quite a few variety of things, um, and I do I do think he is quite uh, suited to this role. Trust me, he does does suit this role quite well. Um, and then there's there's a variety of other ones. Um, we get. You know, kids at the witch school who are, you know, play the, what, what would you call them, the antagonists, I guess, the the ones who are out to get Sabrina because they don't, you know, she's a half witch, blah, 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 blah. There's plenty of those people. There's people who are friends at both places. There's people who are enemies at both places. There's other witches. There's, there's just huge casts. Some only show up for a few episodes. Some show up for a lot of episodes. Um, some use more than others, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, what do I actually think of this show? Um, well, so far in the first season, the first part, whatever you want to call it, uh, I'm digging it. I do like the look. The look is awesome. Like this, the, the the set decoration and the costuming and all that kind of stuff is fantastic. The locations, all that kind of stuff doing a great job when they aren't playing up the camp um so much i like it more when they do kind of go the buffy route uh, it pulls me away obviously uh, you know like it does get that campy feel that buffy feel which is fun to watch but i don't think that's the overall feel especially not at the beginning at the beginning it's very much real very much angsty teen angsty it's very much you know, dark and such. So when you start throwing in these kind of playful, comedic, kind of boopity boop type um, elements sprinkled through as you go later on in the season or in the part, um, I, those ones kind of eh, weren't that great. But you know, whatever. It's almost like I think they had different writers and, and different directors for different sections. So it's everything's going to have a different feel, anyways. But. Um, overall, I am I am looking forward to watching the next part, and I think there's there's two more parts or three more parts at least. So um, I guess it's getting the the um, the watches it needs to continue. So I will continue watching on, and I will check back with you sometime in the future with uh, what I think about part two, maybe part three and part four, or five, five and six. I don't know how many parts there's going to be by the time I get through this. So. Anyways, let me know if you've seen it, what you thought of it. Again, we're only talking about the first season here. Not talking about anything later on. Keep it spoiler-free as much as possible. Um, and, of course, in the future seasons, I will not talk so much about who's in it and such. Um, because, you know, 
I already have, but there will be new characters who prob will probably show up and play big parts in those seasons, so I will talk about them. Um, but outside of that, yeah, uh, give it a shot. If you manage to make it through to, like, the fourth episode and you're still interested, go through. If not, it's it doesn't really change after that. Like I said, if you're looking for more of a Buffy-type show, more comedic, this is not that. This is the darker, more dramatic, more in-your-face type of teen angsty drama evil um but still at the same time oh and sex and and that kind of stuff right it's more adult oriented than it's not a preteen show more so than it is more of a teen and above show um yeah i will say that yeah definitely um it's for an older crowd we'll put it that way um <laughs> that's definitely what, what I would say for sure um, but yeah let me know love to hear from you thanks for watching till next video take care have a good one